Welcome back to The Line. This week, the Albuquerque City Council voted to accept federal funds for the proposed Albuquerque Rapid Transit system. We went out to Knob Hill recently to hear what locals had to say about the proposed bus route. I ride the bus up and down Central all the time, and there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't, it's not broken. It doesn't need to be fixed. It works just fine. You know, ask the business owners themselves, do you think this would be a good idea? How would this affect you? I would encourage people to think about the long-term effects of the actual project um, versus the short-term disruption of a couple months um, at a time for small chunks of, of areas being heavily disrupted. It could end up being a good thing um, as far as slowing down traffic, bringing more people to the neighborhood. I don't know what the ultimate plan is mm -hmm. or from what I hear, it's just, you know, uh, uh, it's going to be a lane that's going from Coors to Tramway on Central Avenue. And we're hoping that that'll generate traffic or, or is that supposed to help us with our businesses? Or I'm not sure exactly what the ultimate outcome is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, because if you look now at the transportation that we have set up, the Al Albuquerque, the rapid transit, um, doesn't seem to be full. What do you think about the proposed Albuquerque rapid transit system? Get in touch with us here at NewMexicoInFocus.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter, Tom Garrity. Despite the objections of many community leaders, it's on, as they say. Uh, what do you think about the vote? What do, you, what do you think about what happened at council? Yeah, I thought... Big vote of confidence? Uh, well, it was a vote, to say the least. I wouldn't right. say it was a vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two people that I didn't think were going to be against it were against it. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with that. You know, with uh, Councillor Pena and uh, Councillor um, Westside, uh, Dan... Lewis. 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 Lewis, yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Sorry, that's okay. Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, when I, I didn't think that they would be against it, I thought it was going to be you know the the uh, downtown core right. and uh, Knob Hill core. But you know, the vote is what it is, and uh, you know the uh, the biggest controversy of the night seemed to be the width of the sidewalks and bike right. lanes. <laughs> uh, and at that point, you know, I when I saw that coming into the conversation, it was like, okay, this this discussion's over because now they're just negotiating the finer points. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, for rapid transit, I think though to be successful you need to have three different items you need to have a business core you need to have entertainment you need to have residential mm -hmm. um, residential is the the third leg of that stool which is just not happening right uh, and so you know perhaps this will help to spur it I you know personally as I've stated before I think this is a good thing mm -hmm. because it will spur economic development I've received emails and comments to the effect that no this is not a good idea and I respect those opinions but you know what mm -hmm. right now we're in a recession and uh, we'll have to see if it works whether it is a a boondoggle, right. I guess we will have to wait and see. Interesting point there, Alicia, because, you know, using a business theorem, mm -hmm. sometimes the best time to open a business is during a downturn. You can negotiate better real estate rates. You can, you know, there's, there's things you can do. It makes it better and prepare yourself for the, for the blessing of better times. Do you feel the same way about this? Is this a preparation for 20 years from now? That is just the bump and grind of how we get to the good stuff down the road? Well, we hope so. Yeah. I mean, we don't know that to be true yet. There are cities who have done this and have best practices. Mm -hmm. Downtown Tucson, downtown Denver, what mm -hmm. are they doing? What did they do with their light rail system and their streetcar systems to ensure that they were bolstering the economy? Mm -hmm. Like my office is in Knob Hill. Right. So I can see myself hopping on art if I have, say, a meeting downtown and I don't want to deal with the parking hassle. Mm -hmm. However, I live outside of the city in the South Valley. So if my husband and I are out on a date night, I don't see myself driving into the city, parking somewhere and ho hopping on art to get to a destination. Right. So with all that being said, the bus has left the station. So now it's time for us to get on board to figure out the solutions as to how this is going to best help all of the businesses along that central corridor. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the family issue and the housing issue that Tom mentioned? Is that, is that a big part of your concern when you look at this as well? I've heard that a lot yeah. actually being a business owner in that neighborhood but mm -hmm. he's right there's not a whole lot of development there and you know with the expansion of sidewalks and bike paths and all of those types of things I think that would bolster some of right. that right. but that's not included in this plan that's why we think we need community involvement from construction onward to That's ensure right. that some of those things are addressed. Good point there. Phil Marquez, good to see you. 
You've had some interesting health issues lately, and we're very glad to have you at this table again, believe me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Good to see you. Um, Alicia brings up something interesting. I have had it put to me that this proposal would have been a lot more palatable if they had done one extra little thing, and that is, was announce a housing project to go along with this idea, just to make the point, to say, see, this is what can happen when you just put an idea on the, sta on the table, you can get investment. That didn't happen. So now we're left to think about this as just theory. Do you see what I mean? I think a lot of Albuquerqueans are not quite grabbing it yet. What, what's your sense of that? Could they have done better with more solid, objective you know, goals with this thing besides just having a train? You mentioned something about the future. Yeah. In the future, this will be nice. At the present, it's a disaster. Well, so. And I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Because downtown, Knob Hill area, they're going to experience some real drop in business. There's just no way around it. Right. I saw that when they put the Bloomfield Highway through Bloomfield. Businesses, they were supposed to take a certain period of time. It ended up taking much longer. Right. Businesses literally closed down. They could not stay alive because the traffic pattern mm -hmm. and the purchase pattern changed dramatically. And I think, I think that's one of the issues that a lot of the people have talked about in these areas. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, down the line, once you go through this pain, I think what they're, go they're gonna go through. Mm -hmm. Uh, down the line, it's going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like taking the, the light rail from Mesa, Arizona to downtown to watch the ball game yep. and not have to deal with the traffic at all. It's wonderful. But there is a price that you've got to pay to get there. That's right. And that's the issue that everybody's facing with. Good point there. You know, I've taken that train uh, to uh, downtown Phoenix and watch him just hop off the train or walk in the stadium. It's an amazing thing. And then get on it and go home. You know, Sophie, it's interesting. Uh, I came up a lot in the, in, the, in the comments about the charm and the importance of Route 66 mm -hmm. and keeping that intact in some manner, some way. You know, it really was a reminder. It means something to a lot of people here. It, it does, but I, mm -hmm. I think one of the things to remember about Route 66, mm -hmm. um, and this is something that was once true of Highway 60, which is down south in New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, is that it is a it was a, a product of a car culture. Mm -hmm. It was, in fact, in fact, to a certain extent, designed to encourage that car culture. Right. We are in a different place now, and Albuquerque struggles mightily with this issue of how do we encourage people to leave the car at home, maybe not to have a car? Mm -hmm. How do we encourage people to look at different ways of moving around the city for the health of our city, for the health of our environment, um, for the health of our economy? And to, to Phil's point, the pain is going to happen at some point. Right. I'm not sure that there's ever going to be an awesome time for those right. businesses to suffer the to suffer the difficulties that we all I think believe they're going to suffer sure. um, but for our community as a whole I really do believe that these sorts of projects and not just this one but the ones that will follow on that will mm -hmm. tie to this project they, they need to happen mm -hmm. they need to happen so I understand the love of route 66 mm -hmm. um, and the, the love of that of that um, kind of period of time sure. I'm not sure that I think as many people have that kind of mm -hmm. nostalgia about 66 mm -hmm. and about the car, car culture as perhaps claim they do now. Good point there. Good point there, Tom. You know, interesting, there's been some good uh, articles starting last spring about this idea that we keep hearing over and over from proponents of art that millennials are giving up cars, mm. that we have to get ready for this. They, they're just saying the heck with everything. The suburbs, well, it turns out those numbers are not quite correct. Millennials are buying lots of cars right now. Yeah. So what does that put our argument about, about art? Well, I think it's a, a couple of different arguments, right? One is, is you have the philosophy that, you know, we live in the West, right? right? And, you know, why, why do you point. need art in the West or some mm -hmm. type of rapid transit? You know, the rail runner people will point to for that. I think we need a mm -hmm. diverse transportation economy. Mm -hmm. Relying on one segment of the economy, a, a demographic segment like the millennials, mm -hmm. to save everything or to use one particular is just does not make sense. Right. Uh, we have seen, as uh, we've, uh, uh, you know, seen th through different stories on NPR, oh, right. uh, as well mm -hmm. is that millennials are moving from apartments and they're saying you know what we want a house uh, we want to have a car we don't want to rely on public right. transit That's and right. so you know relying on one segment of the uh, of a demographic generation to say they're going to be the savior here right. is really not smart <laughs> business planning because right. they're going to change their mind if there's one thing we've learned about millennials as That's well right. as boomers right. a little bit more consistent in their decision making but right. millennials will change their mind in a heartbeat right. so who knows they might be able to go back to you know sell the car and you know back into sure. the apartments sure. i kind of doubt it interesting we're under 30 seconds alicia you know, I wanted you to touch on this as well. 
this whole, you're both in PR, we're being told all this public relations, this is the way it should go, and now it turns out we're against a bit of a trend here with this. And in fact, the idea should be about uh, supplying families mm -hmm. with a way to, to carry on their lives with rapid transit, as opposed to that string of pearls, you know, stuff with uh, millennials and such. Does that make sense to you from an Albuquerque perspective? to concentrate more on families, perhaps, along this route? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think if we were talking about Portland, Oregon, or we were talking about right. Seattle, that right. would be different. You have tech jobs, you have all of this industry that attracts the millennials. Right. Albuquerque is not that city yet. They're still, we're still very family-based. Right. So I agree with Tom. It's going to be a, a touch and go here. Sure, sure. this will be interesting. Now, in a few minutes, this week's Line Opinion panelists discuss recent reports that women are coming to New Mexico from other states for abortions.